Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard Number 208 requires that the safety belt system on all 1974 passenger cars include a starter interlock, which will not allow the engine to be started until the driver and right seat passenger fasten their seat belts after they are seated. Enter. Sit. Buckle. Start. If either person buckles first, then sits on the seat, the engine will not start. These scenes demonstrate the basic requirement of the starter interlock. However, the new system frequently prompts the following questions. Does unbuckling a belt stop the engine? Can the engine be restarted if it stalls? Can the engine be started if the interlock fails? Is the buzzer and reminder system the same as last year? Let's take these questions one at a time. To warn of an unfastened seat belt, the reminder part of the system, the buzzer, and the light comes on, just as on the 1973 model. Although the 1973 type buzzer and warning light are used on the 1974 models, the reminder system circuits are entirely new this year. You'll see why later on. Let's look at the belts for the new restraint system. The shoulder belt and lap belt are now combined so that one buckle secures both belts. An automatic locking lap belt retractor is used on the 1974 models. It works just like past model locking retractors, but it no longer contains a lap belt warning switch. The switch, which tells the system whether or not the belt is fastened, is now in the buckle instead of the belt retractor. The shoulder belt has an inertia type retractor. This feature lets the wearer move the upper part of the body without tripping the inertia lock. However, any sudden movement of the body, which pulls the belt out of the retractor very rapidly, trips the inertia lock. When that happens, the locked shoulder belt limits body movement, as it would in case of a collision. Here's your answer to the next question. Unbuckling a front seat belt after the engine has been started does not stop the engine. That's because the interlock system is tied into the starter relay circuit, not the ignition run circuit. Unbuckling a front seat belt when the engine is running and the car is in gear does cause the warning system to go into action. What if the engine stalls? As long as the driver remains seated and buckled, the engine can be restarted without going through the seating buckling sequence again. What if something goes wrong with one of the buckle switches or circuits and the engine won't crank or start? An interlock bypass switch located in the engine compartment activates a temporary bypass circuit which permits engine starting in spite of a malfunction in the interlock system. The button must be pushed and released. Holding the emergency start button down will not actuate the interlock bypass. Now that we've demonstrated the basic operation of the new interlock and reminder system, let's get acquainted with circuits and components. Here are the front seat cushion switches. Two slider type switches, like the ones found on the 1973 models, are used at the two outboard seating positions. The slider type switches are attached to the seat springs. As in past models, they are normally open. Passenger or driver weight deflects the seat springs and closes the switch to tell the system which seating positions are occupied. This sandwich type switch is used for the center seat position. It is installed in a recess in the center of the seat pad under the seat trim material. It is normally open like the two slider type switches. Pressure on this switch pushes one or more of these conductor dimples into contact with a conductor strip on the other side of the switch to establish a closed circuit. The sandwich type switch is used at the center seating position because it is less sensitive to seat deflection caused by passenger weight at the outboard ends of the front seat than the slider type switch. You have to apply weight directly to the center area of the seat to close it. The belt switches are now located in the buckles instead of in the belt retractors. They are normally open. Buckling up closes the belt switch. Last year's retractor switches are normally closed and opened by pulling the belt from the retractor. 
The seat and belt switches do not control the reminder system directly, as on last year's models. Instead, they send signals to the system's electronic brain. This is the electronic control unit. It is a miniature computer or electronic relay capable of receiving input signals from 11 different switches or circuits. Here's what the inside of the control unit looks like. This circuit board interprets the 11 incoming signals and then completes one or more output circuits to the reminder system and starter relay. Incidentally, this little electronic unit is right out of space age science. It's referred to as an integrated circuit. When a photo of this integrated circuit is blown up 50 times actual size, it looks like this. The many micro circuits contained in this unit are so complex, they resemble the street map of a large city. In addition to the input signals from the seat and belt switches, the dome light switch ground circuits provide an important input signal. This feature is not required by the federal standard, but it does minimize a potentially annoying condition. Specifically, if it weren't for that dome light ground circuit input signal, squirming or lifting off the seat after buckling up could momentarily open the seat switch. This would upset the sit then buckle sequence. As a result, the engine could not be started until the belt was unbuckled and rebuckled to re-establish the correct seating and buckling sequence. Thanks to the dome light switch circuit, the control unit could be designed to ignore intermittent opening of a seat switch. As a result, you can buckle up, lift your weight off the seat, and still start the engine without unbuckling and rebuckling. However, opening any door equipped with a dome light switch before the engine is started sends a new signal to the electronic control unit. The control unit immediately checks to see if the driver is still seated and buckled. If so, the car can be started. On the other hand, if the driver raises up so that the seat switch is opened while the door is open, the starting sequence is interrupted. As a result, the car cannot be started until the driver's belt is unbuckled and then rebuckled to reestablish the starting sequence. As in the past, the neutral safety switch on automatic transmission cars provides the starter relay ground circuit. As a result, the engine cannot be started if the transmission is in gear. Suppose the transmission is shifted into any gear when the engine is running. The neutral safety switch alerts the reminder system if the belt in any occupied front seat is unbuckled. This interlock bypass switch is another feature which exceeds the minimum federal standard. It gives the owner an emergency start capability in case of a malfunction of an interlock switch or circuit. This is a very special kind of switch. Although it is serviced as an assembly, knowing what's inside the switch will give you a better understanding of how the interlock bypass circuit works. Here you can see that the switch contains two sets of contacts which control two separate circuits. Both sets of contacts are normally held open by a mechanical blocker. Closing this set of bypass contacts completes a circuit to the starter relay. This bypasses the control unit so that the engine can be cranked when the ignition key is turned to the start position. Closing the other set of contacts completes a circuit to a small heating element coiled around a bimetal spring strip. This coil is fed by the ignition run circuit. Pushing and then releasing the interlock bypass button moves the blocker out of the way. This allows both sets of contacts to close. Watch the action again. After the button has been pushed and the ignition is turned on, the heating element heats the bimetal spring. The heater and bypass circuit contacts remain closed as long as the ignition remains on. However, if the ignition is turned off, the heating element circuit is opened. The bimetal cools and opens both sets of contacts. The blocker moves in and holds the contacts open. As a result, the car cannot be started until the emergency button is again pushed and released. This feature is designed to let you crank the engine, in case it stalls, as many times as necessary. <coughs> However, once you turn the ignition switch to the off position, the emergency start circuit is deactivated. There is one exception. If you turn the ignition off momentarily and then back to the start position very quickly, the heater and bimetal won't have time to cool and the emergency start circuit will remain closed. Just remember, the emergency start button must be pushed and released to provide emergency starting convenience. 
Don't try and fool the system by taping the emergency start button down. It won't work. That just about completes the story on how the interlock system works. You'll find more detailed information about operation and circuits in the reference book. But what about diagnosis and service? The electronic control unit and switches are serviced as complete assemblies. None of these components are repairable. It is possible to check out the continuity of each switch and its circuit by using a test light and jumper. When checking a switch, just remember that seat, belt, and other input switches are normally open. Needless to say, isolating trouble in this system may not be easy. Since all 1974 model cars will be equipped with the belt interlock system, Chrysler has developed this special starter interlock analyzer. It will check out the electronic control unit and each circuit to pinpoint the cause of trouble in approximately two minutes. The analyzer is even capable of testing itself to make sure it's working properly. Just plug the analyzer test lead into the cigar lighter receptacle and set the selector for the self-test. That's all there is to checking the analyzer. To check the control unit, just plug it into the analyzer and change the position of the selector for the unit test. The analyzer has just performed a complete sequence check showing that this control unit is okay. If the control unit were faulty, the fault light would come on and the control unit should be replaced. Trouble in any switch or circuit can be pinpointed by plugging the analyzer into the interlock system in place of the electronic control unit and then testing the operation of each switch. Our model will demonstrate testing of the system. And that's what the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard and the Seat Belt Starter Interlock System is all about. If you still have questions, be sure and read your reference book for this session. It and your service manuals contain additional service information.